Good morning, everyone. This morning for our devotional, uh, we'll be talking about overcompensating Christianity. As I reflect on the topic, um, I wonder what to speak about. And um, as I asked the Lord what to speak about, this is what came to me. Hope you're all doing well. Um, intention the healing, those of you who have ordered, um, you should have received your copy, depending on your location, or you'll be receiving your copy shortly. Um, I'll tell you more about that, but for a devotion. So I've been listening to this video about family systems, and it's been talking about um, different behaviors and what's your role in your family? What's your role in church? What's your role in your friendship circle? So as I think about that, I reflect on our spirituality or relationship with God. Then Micah comes to mind, Micah chapter five, verse six, um, and the chapter five, where the children of Israel, where God um, was having a conversation with his people and the children of Israel brought an accusation against God and asked God with the, uh, their audaciousness, their audacity of asking God, how have we wronged you? And they brought a case against God. And God called the mountains to witness and to listen and to testify. The children of Israel walked away from God and they op overcompensated their relationship with God with idols. They overindulged in a lot of things. And similarly, so what is this overcompensation that we're talking about? So normally um, the term of Compensation refers to a type of defense mechanism in which people overachieve in one area to compensate for failures in another. For example, individuals with poor family lives may direct their energy into excelling above and beyond what is required at work. And they don't want to come home because they don't want to deal with the issues that they're having at home. So the psychological strategy allows people to disguise inadequacies and frustrations and stresses in their lives and urged by directing energy towards excelling or achieving in other areas. While it can be beneficial at times, it can also cause problems when it is overused or misapplied. And how does this apply to all Christianity? In a relationship, how does overcompensating manifest itself? So relationships are full of natural highs and lows and each plays a very important role in the connection the two of you are building together as a family. The same is with a relationship with God. There are highs and lows in a walk with God, unfortunately. But as we build our relationship with God, hopefully we'll have more highs and lows. However, there are times when one person's relationship overcompensates for the other, leading to an unhealthy love-life balance. Not only does this set a precedent for moving forward with this person, but it also can become a huge drain on one, on the person who is overcompensating. So how do you know if you are the one who is overcompensating in the relationship? To overcompensate emotionally means that one person is taking on all the feelings of the other. Having one person take ownership of the other's feelings and behaviours creates a toxic dynamic. Overcompensating means an excessive reaction to overwhelming feeling of guilt. There are many different ways to compensate for your other half or significant other. While a financial split is, a common, is common in a relationship, we talk about overcompensating on the emotional side, which the person takes 50% or more of what's going on in a relationship. If one person feels jealous and self-conscious in their relationship, they may overcompensate by overly expressing positive emotions like love and affection. This is done to protect their feelings because one, if they face the real problem, they would have to deal with it. Another way that people overcompensate in a relationship is to take over the emotions of both people involved. If one person's relationship isn't really feeling it or as involved, 
as they should, and the other person will make up for it by doing more than keeping the other person happy. Overcompensating is a major sign that something might not be right in your, your relationship, whether it's with each other, with your family, with your spouse, or with God. So in our Christianity, how do we overcompensate? We find ourselves getting involved in a lot of activities, going to a lot of functions, but we're not spending enough time building our actual relationship with God. We are church, 24 7 44 8. We're doing a lot of stuff, a lot of activities. But how much time do we spend in prayer and Bible reading and alone with God? We can be working for God and just don't have a relationship with Him. So we overcompensate for this emptiness we're feeling in our spirituality by getting more involved in other activities at church. So we don't have to face the reality that we're not really praying, we're not really reading our Bible, and we're not really spending time with God. So we overcompensate. We do more projects, more programs, and less connection with God. And then we try to justify why we're doing what we're doing. If you look in our overcompensated life, everything goes. We trample on the Sabbath, we put a lot of stuff on it. We don't have time for each other. And, oh, I'm busy. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing that. So we overcompensate for caring for God and for each other and for ourselves by getting more and more involved. This morning, I want to challenge us to find balance, not to undercompensate, not to overcompensate, but to spend quality time building your relationship with God. Time is running out and we have to be intentional. God has an intentional plan for our lives and purpose, but if you're not intentional with it, if you find yourself overcompensating, it's time to let go and to let God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. Father, if we are truthful, Lord, there's so many areas in our lives where we overcompensate. Some of us, we overcompensate in the things we indulge ourselves in, in eating and gyms and TV and a lot of things in our lives we will compensate because it covers the inadequacies in our lives that we have to deal with. With our children, we overcompensate, Lord, let them do as they please in the name of love because we feel inadequate as parents. In our relationship with you, Lord, we overcompensate. We um, get involved and in trying to work our way because we feel inadequate to you. We go from program to program sometimes, Lord, and not connecting with you directly. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to be honest with ourselves and see where we are so we can get the healing that we deserve. Father, please forgive us for all we've done. I surrender our days into your hands and we invite your Holy Spirit in, Lord, and ask you to bring balance to our lives, I pray. Forgive us, Lord. Make us a blessing today. Pour your oil without measure. Give us connection and set someone free. Lord, I lift up a prayer request before you. And Lord, I lift up See, Lord, for healing. He had a surgery yesterday. I hope he's doing well. So, Lord, I ask you to bless him in a very special way. I ask you to reconcile his heart to you, Lord, more than anything else. And to bring him out of his shell into a saving relationship with you. I lift up all our families and friends, Lord. Or the request for the person that I posted yesterday. Dear God, I just ask you, Lord, to come into our lives, into our empty spaces, Lord. And to bring some balance for his spirit to or overextend their lives in the wrong things. Cleanse and forgive us. And we surrender ourselves to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day. Bless.